It's been a rough weekend for the Yankees, and they look to get back on track against the Toronto Blue Jays, with whom they've had lots of trouble this year. Here's a few highlights from how it went down, and then I will be back with a full recap and some analysis. When he gets that fastball near the zone. There's one deep drive to left field. Get him, Bob. Get out of here and gone. Stay hot, Marcus. It's going up. There's a hanging breaking ball. He hits it to right. Doesn't take much to hit it out of here. And this one's gone. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Strike three. The number nine batter. Another fly ball left field, though. Tess Gallo again. Another battle with the sun. That one is looped into center field, and that is going to be caught by a diving Brett Gardner. He'll flip to second for the double play. But it's not good for grabbing on the bases. There's a base hit that's going to score a run. Drive to left field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is gone. Hey, Oscar. Base is loaded. Bringing a high fly ball to left field. This ball is in the corner. This ball is going to go. Grand slam home. Well, the Yankees have gone back to being boring. Rough start. Jamison Tyone gave up home runs in the first inning back to back. Shouldn't be surprising. He's looked tired for about a month. He did settle down after the home runs, though. He ended up going seven innings, giving up just three hits, three earned runs, two walks, five strikeouts. ERA on the season sits at 4.41. Glaber Torres made another error in the top of the second. Gio Urshela made two errors in the first three innings. Brett Gardner, though, made a great diving catch and was able to flip to second for a double play in the top of the third. Tyone gave up another run in the seventh, but overall, I would say he was just okay today. He didn't have overpowering stuff. We saw 96, but he was getting foul balls. He wasn't just zipping it by, guys, as he has done at times this season. Breaking ball looked okay. Didn't look quite as sharp as it's looked. I still contend that he needs about a week or 10 days off. I really think they should skip him in the rotation next time. Maybe start Luis Heal. I don't know what the Yankees are going to do, but it's obvious to me that he could use a little bit of a break, even though his final line today wasn't too bad. Through seven, the Yankees' offense was very quiet. They had just four hits and no walks. They had struck out eight times. They did ground into a double play, DJ LeMayhew. But overall, the lineup was just boring. Top of the eighth, Lucas Litke comes in the game. He's a guy who's looked a little bit tired to me, too, the last month. I guess everybody's tired, right? But you're going to be seeing more of Lucas Litke, especially since... Jonathan Loizaga is going to be out for probably most of the rest of the season, if not the entire season. But you're going to have to see Lucas Litke step up. He gets through the eighth inning today. You're going to have to see Chad Green pitch better as well. Yankees may have to go to the minor leagues and bring up somebody. I know that Steven Ridings came up for a while and was terrific, but he went down to AAA. He had some elbow issues, but it wasn't anything serious. He's working his way back. Hopefully we'll see Ridings again soon. Yankees offense today, though, was feeble. They did nothing against Ryu. He went six shutout innings. Richards comes in, gives up a base hit, but strikes out two. And then Meza comes in for the eighth inning. He's a lefty, and he was throwing pitches about three or four inches outside to Luke Voigt, and Luke Voigt was trying to pull them. He, of course, strikes out. Yankees go quietly in the eighth. Brooks Kriske comes in for the top of the eighth. He throws a little bit of gas on the old fire, allows a solo home run to Teoscar Hernandez. And look, the Blue Jays are going to hit. Nobody should be surprised that the Blue Jays can hit or that they hit well against the Yankees today. He then proceeds to walk the bases loaded because he's terrible at pitching. Andrew Heaney was shown to be warming up in the bullpen at that point, which is basically the white flag of defeat. And at that point, you knew the game was pretty much over. Simeon hits a grand slam, and that's all she wrote for the Bombers. They have now lost seven of nine. And if Boston hangs on to win, which it looks like right now they are, Boston will be back by just one game in the loss column. Wouldn't surprise me if the Yankees coughed away this 
wild card lead, at least the number one spot. They might cough up both spots the way they're playing right now. It's strange. When you put all of these hitters, you know, your best hitters on paper, you put them all in the same lineup, they just don't hit. It's the weirdest thing. I don't think I've ever seen a team this boring. When they have everybody in the lineup that they're supposed to have, essentially, they hit ground balls to short, ground balls to second. They strike out. They take pitches down the middle. It's like it changes the entire chemistry of the team. Times like this are when Billy Martin would draw the lineup out of a hat, essentially. Now, some of that may have been prearranged. I mean, you might have had 15 Reggie Jacksons in there, you know, just to make sure that you get him in the lineup. But the Yankees are just not swinging the bat well. They're not having good at bats. The bullpen has been atrocious. Uh, Krisky and Heaney have no business being on a major league roster. But this is what you're forced to go with at a time when you're trying to secure the at least the number one wild card spot. It's just a bad look. Just a bad look for the New York Yankees. They have another rough day, and there's not much you can say. I didn't want to do a live stream today. I'm trying to cut down on my live streams after each game. Uh, I've pretty much done a live stream nearly every game all season, but when the Yankees lose, it just gets too toxic for me. It just becomes this, you know, circle jerk of negativity. And I just don't feel like sitting through it for a half an hour out of my day, especially on Labor Day. I'm supposed to have the day off. So uh, I've created this sort of pre-recorded format, which I'll use sometimes. Uh, and it works as a free advertisement for the freeze so that people will subscribe and download that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Labor Day. I know that I will because the Yankees don't have any more games today. I'll see you next time.